All right, in this video, we're going to run layout versus schematic on the uh, automatically placed and routed DSP block that we've been working on. Uh, before we do that, we need to make one uh, minor modification. Uh, if we look in uh, the cells, you'll see that they insert uh, fill cap, or at least we inserted fill cap as part of the process uh, in order to add some decoupling cap local to this block. Uh, and we did that with these fill SG cap uh, cells. So for instance, I have uh, fill SG cap 2, 3, 4, uh, 8, and so on and so forth. Um, it does not automatically add these to the schematic. So I'm going to find uh, the number of instances, and you can see them all marked here. Uh, this is the number of instances of fill SG cap 2. You can see that there are 4,134 of those. So I'm going to add an instance to the schematic. There's a fill SG cap 2 uh, uh, schematic cell. And I'm going to add fill cap 2 uh, index from 4133 to 0, uh, which will give me 4,134 cells. Uh, similarly, we can search for fill cap 3, 4, 8, and so on. In this design, uh, it did not use any of the larger cap cells. Uh, this library has uh, cap cells up to 128. Uh, in this particular design, it didn't use anything past fill cap 8. Uh, so I have all the instances of fill cap that I need instantiated. Now with that, I'm going to go into Pegasus. And instead of DRC this time, I'm going to run LBS. And let's go through the setup. So I have a run directory under my parent directory called LVS. Uh, I'm going to be running this on a remote uh, advanced research computing uh, server. Uh, and so here I have a command uh, that's used in order to push this job into the remote server. For the rules file, I've uh, pointed the rules uh, file uh, to the uh, LVS rule file for Pegasus. In the include PVL, I'm using black box, and I'm using black box for those fill cells. If I wanted to add another cell, for instance, let's say I did have a fill SG cap 16, I might add something like this. I would click add and it would add that cell into the list uh, of black box cells. Uh, now what's important here uh, is basically it will identify these cells, but it's not going to uh, extract them uh, when it does the uh, LVS comparison. Uh, and uh, that will be uh, uh, okay. This is a fairly common practice for some passives that we use in RF, for instance, if we have a model for them. Uh, beyond that, everything else should be set up uh, automatically. Uh, it should be uh, extracting a spice view uh, and a GDS file, uh, or sorry, a netlist uh, file, which is a, a CDL file uh, from the schematic, uh, and also extracting a GDS file uh, for the layout. I haven't set any other options other than under extract options, I've selected uh, my power and ground nets. All right, so with that, we are ready to run. So we click Submit. I've already run this once. So I'm going to click Overwrite and let it run it again. And we'll come back in just a few moments when this is done. All right, so you can see here that uh, Pegasus finished. Uh, and it tells us uh, that the comparison matched with warnings. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what those warnings are. Uh, in this case, uh, it's just telling us that the top cell has extra pins uh, in the cell. Uh, now, it turns out, I, I've checked this out and uh, looking in the comparison report here, uh, if we scroll down to the bottom, uh, we'll see that it's just finding uh, pins labeled B and W and BPW. These are the N well and P well voltages. Uh, they uh, are connected. This is just a warning saying that it's found them and it doesn't think they're connected, but they certainly are connected since they're connected in every cell. 
so with that, I will uh, go ahead and uh, ignore uh, that particular warning or say that that warning is okay. Now, uh, we saw there that the design ran uh, and things matched well. Uh, let's go in and see what happens uh, if we you know, purposefully cause the design to mismatch. Uh, so here is a buffer cell. Uh, this one is, it is uh, a 0.5 buffer. Let's see what happens if I make this a 1PO buffer. Oh, that one doesn't exist in the netlist. Let's find one that does, or sorry, in the SL library. Uh, let's make it a, uh, a 0P7B. All right, so just a minor change to the buffer. I'm going to save the schematic. Close that. And now I'm going to go back and resubmit my job. All right, so we'll let this run and we'll see it, uh, if it detects the error and, and what kind of error it shows us if it does. All right, so here you can see that the comparison is now run and indeed uh, it's finding a mismatch. So let's open this up. And we'll look to see where the mismatch is. Of course, uh, none of the black box cells have a problem, but it did find uh, a mismatch. So here uh, I'm going to uh, open up the tree for the um, for the FIR filter we're working on. I'm going to click, and you're going to see some mismatched instance parameters. All right, you can see that in the layout uh, it finds that you know this PMOS transistor is smaller than the one in the schematic. Same thing with this PMOS transistor, same thing with this NMOS transistor, same thing with this NMOS transistor. Now this makes sense. We uh, did just replace the, uh, the 0.5 buffer with the 0.7 buffer, which means that in the schematic, the, the, uh, the transistors should all be a little bit bigger than they are in layout. Uh, this is an example of some kind of, a, of a warning that you might find, uh, you know, if there is a mismatch between the layout and the schematic. So I just wanted to show you that to see what happens if there is an error. I'm going to go back in uh, to the schematic and I'm going to replace that transistor with the correct version. And I'm going to click OK. Uh, now I'm going to, you know, maybe here I'll, I'll delete one of the supply wires uh, and I'm going to click uh, save. And we're going to save the schematic. I'm going to go back to our Pegasus tool, go to resubmit. And I'm going to now resubmit this uh, design for LVS and we'll come back and see what that does. Uh, ideally that will throw up a little bit different of an error uh, and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. All right, so indeed, uh, we do have a different type of error now. We have a comparison short and a mismatch uh, result now. So let's go ahead and open this up. We can expand our cell that we're looking at, find the shorts and opens, uh, and it's finding uh, now that because that, uh, that uh, pin on the schematic is disconnected, uh, but on the layout, it's still connected. It's finding that to be a uh, short because it thinks that the net on the schematic should be net one, but on the layout, it's finding that it's connected to VSS. Uh, of course, we know uh, that, that uh, we just introduced that error on purpose, so uh, we can go back in and fix this pretty easily. I'll just reattach the label. Now our cell is exactly as, uh, as we uh, had it originally. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just make sure that I didn't introduce any permanent errors into this design by resubmitting everything one more time. Uh, and that will verify that we fixed those things. Now I do want to point out that uh, 
that there are many different types of errors that you might find in the LVS. So there are property errors, uh, like we saw when we replaced one cell with another cell. Uh, there are uh, instance errors where it just can't identify one instance uh, in a cell uh, in a schematic uh, uh, versus the layout. So it might think that there's an extra cell or an extra instance in the layout that doesn't exist in the schematic or vice versa. Uh, there are, of course, uh, all kinds of wiring errors. So it can think that one wire is connected uh, to another net that it shouldn't be. Uh, that's something that's fairly common to find. Uh, when you do find these errors, uh, it's uh, it, it, it can be a bit tricky to fix them. But many times, if you have just one error that's very critical, uh, and you fix that error, it will fix a lot of other errors. Uh, you know, for instance, here we saw that there was a comparison error and a short error. Uh, we just changed the, the wire back, and it should fix both of those. Uh, so that's something uh, to be aware of as you are fixing LVS and uh, you know, layout versus schematic errors. All right, so our LVS finished again, and we're back to what we started with. Uh, if we look at this, we just have a match with warnings. If we open this up, uh, we're going to see that uh, ideally it's just that extra pin uh, tree item uh, warning that we uh, saw from earlier. Uh, and again, uh, that's fine. All right, so that's how we run LVS uh, using the Pegasus system. Uh, in the coming days, uh, I will also show you how to uh, do uh, LVS and DRC using Caliber. Now, our next step, which I'll do in a subsequent video, will be to do an extraction uh, of this uh, particular layout. Uh, we're going to do the extraction using Qantas, which is a cadence tool. Uh, and then again, in a subsequent video, I'll show you how to do extraction using uh, using PEX, which is a caliber or a graphics based tool. All right, we'll talk to you next time.